Okay, hi everybody. Thank you very much for um, signing in for what's, I'm afraid, going to be the shortest talent talk we've ever done. Um, unfortunately, uh, we've not been able to get Sumya connected um, on camera. And although I know a bit about this subject, Sumya's the, the, the expert and uh, I was going to be asking him all the different questions. So I'm afraid to say we're going to have to reschedule. The good news for, for you is that you've got 45 minutes back, um, which you weren't expecting to have. But um, unfortunately, as I say, I, I, I'm not going to be able to do this um, on my own. And so um, I hope that um, you'll accept my apologies and feel free uh, to ask me if you want any favors or anything like that, because I'm very happy to give them to you in uh, return for not managing to get this session going. Sure that you all. Oh, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Just as I say that, Sumya, yeah. can you speak? And we're. And are you here? I am here. Can you hear me? Yes, terrific. You're a bit quiet, but uh, yeah. Let me see. Okay. So you're here. Wow. Okay, that's excellent. Um, that's we've tried. We tried a couple of devices there. We tried a couple of different things to get this going, and um, it looks like. Um, at the very last minute, you've you've managed to join, so terrific. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying here and there, and then and last it worked, so that's good for us. Yeah, terrific. Okay, um, so let's get going then. Um, sure. First of all, would you like to? Um, could you just introduce introduce yourself? Give us normally um, our guests give us uh, just a minute on what's your career. Tell us about your CV. What's your background? Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm into HR tech or HR IT for more than fourteen years. So I work with. Um, consulting companies uh, directly in the customer side. So the last uh, more than what decades I'm working with HR solution, HRMS solutions, especially um, focusing on SAP on a great extent, but also with other service provider. So, but if you see for the last one decade, there is a lot of changes, a lot of new thinkings coming on some starting with talent management and now with engagement, ex employee experience, things with AI stuff also for the last few years. So things are changing a lot, and um, I'm quite uh, lucky to be part of my career in this stage because I've seen these changes for these years and um, working with all other leaders and uh, have my network there. So for the last few years, I also have started my own venture called People Consigns. So I'm, what I'm doing here is I'm engaging with uh, the leaders for the future, how we're ready for the future workforce, for the future of work. Uh, how the things are changing with the technologies, how we should adapt with ourselves as a workforce or as an HR, as a leader, as an organization. So basically, I am more like an advisor for people and organization perspective. And uh, I'm also like from long term, I'm working with HR tech and people analytics part for certain times. And um, time to time, I'm also evangelizing people of work, uh, future of work and uh, one new area, which is human plus machine collaboration. So which I think pretty much one of the topic which we will discuss today. And that's pretty much the background of me, and that's how it's going. You've also got a very international background. You're you're based in Germany. You're originally from India. Is that right? Yes, I'm originally from India, but for the last uh, 13 years, I'm out of India. And yeah. I, most of the time, uh, um, you can, um, I stay in the U.S., I stay in the uh, Middle East, a couple of countries in um, Europe. Uh, for the last six years, I'm based in Germany here in Frankfurt, and I'm responsible also for um, global HR solution and technology for Hyundai Motors. Uh, so that's one of my professionally I'm linked, and I'm passionately I'm doing uh, my own stuff also to letting uh, engage and uh, increase my build my own network. So that's why I also part of a speaker in many of the conferences. There are many conferences coming up also. So yeah. it's good to know about what people are doing. It's good to know about sharing their knowledge, and that is the. the New world is about uh, more about collaboration, more about uh, purpose oriented, and how we can help each other, and um, especially in this world where everything called disruption. <laughs> yeah, of course, absolutely. Okay, so um, what I'd like to talk about is obviously the, the theme for this session is automation and artificial intelligence. Yeah. Just before we go into that in a bit more detail, what just just stepping back a. Broadly than, than those specific topics, how do you see technology impacting on on HR and the, and and the workplace and the, the you know the world of work? I think uh, if you say for the last 
many years now, it's impacting huge. So um, I think we have seen the trends like more uh, in earlier days, if you see like HR and technology, we talk about HR technologies more on HRIS or HM, HRM assistance or like HR assistance, like you people like that more focus on administrative talk of HR. There is like a few part of talent management or like uh, basic like recruiting or learning. But now you see like for the last many years, there are talent management has been improved a lot. It, it, many people call it people management. So there are a lot of focus, not only on the recruiting and learning part, there are also like people concerning about succession planning, people concerning about uh, how the new way of uh, working with engagement and experiences come into picture. So there are a lot of focus on uh, employee experience in the part. And mm. uh, if you see like uh, for many years, people analytics or HR analytics is a part of every single organizations like, Yes, there are many organizations who are in the very early stage, some of them in middle, but this is uh, the world which is driven by data. And uh, yes, and, and if you see like like every single applications which is impacted by data in terms of whether it's a feedback application, whether it's engagement application, whether you call AI-based application, which is also main basis is data. So definitely the people analytics is like, uh, like a big turnover for HR for many years now, um, I think, and it's, it's, it's taking care and taking relatively on a big stage uh, at this moment. And uh, that's why the, if you see like the AI also come in terms of that. Uh, so we will discuss like uh, what's the reality with AI and uh, how we are currently. But yes, impacting a lot us uh, in terms of workforce and also for the HR people. So one thing that I find quite interesting is the fact that um, up until the last couple of years, yeah. HR, Seem, seemed to be very much behind other business disciplines like finance and marketing and various others. Um, but from what I see, there's a lot more venture capital money and in, in general investment going into HR technology. That, is, that, is that what you've seen? And if so, why do you think HR has been behind other business areas? Uh, I have seen totally the same, uh, Adam. Uh, thanks for asking the question. This is a big, um, important question to understand why HR is behind. Uh, I have seen like with many companies and also with in, from the past, very past, like HR is always treated as a cost center than a profit center. You know? And that's the biggest challenge because of that, the technology is impacting HR a little bit slower in compared to marketing, sales, like finance, which are the major in terms of any organizations because they are relatively directly proportional to the numbers of the benefits or the result or all these things. And this is the reason, like, um, there are also a lot of discussion, a lot of um, improvement coming from many years, but it doesn't happen in HR really relatively fast compared to them. That's the, one of the reasons. Another thing is uh, also the thing of perspective uh, of um, the people we are working in the HR because they are more working with the people or like a human resource than the technology. They are not the people from the technology background, not the people from the STEM background. So they, definitely there's a big gap with uh, work technology and the people with HR. That's mm. what I've seen also in my 13, 14 years of experience, like there is always a big gap between HR and the IT and the both work separately <laughs> in terms of working, but which is uh, nowadays is changing a lot. I have seen like they're more like a one team and especially like there's a big changes coming in technology in terms of cloud, which is happening for last five, six years, which make the HR to rethink about the technology again, because that makes you really um, cost saving mode in terms of going uh, not only to the cloud and also making use of new talent management and new solution which is providing by all the service providers currently so things are changing uh, but uh, yes it's a little bit slower in compared to the other area like in marketing sales or finance yeah. but uh, but i believe like uh, it's not like too late because still in the other areas as well people don't know like what is the future tomorrow because the technology is changing so disruptively everywhere so um, nevertheless if the people are really understanding like to go with the technology also in terms of hr i think in a couple of years they will also catch up with other areas there is no hard rule <laughs> yeah no absolutely in fact even even more simply than that if you think about sort of stem sort of um, the, the kind of it, characteristics of somebody who is a technology professional, they're not, they're normally quite um, right brained. And then somebody who is uh, 
you know, on the kind of people side is often more left brain. Sorry, it's the wrong way around. Yeah. But you know, you know what I mean. Um, so yeah, that could could be could be one of the reasons why. Um, okay, let's talk about some definitions first. So could you give me your your? There's three specific things I want to talk about: automation, machine learning, and artificial intelligence. Could you just give us layman's terms? What's your definition of these three specific areas? Okay, now I think you have used uh, really good terms because it's also we can I can explain it in stage. I think automation is not new for us, especially like uh, people talking about automation for like many many years. It's more on like automate your existing process in terms of more like digitalizing, digitalizing or on that purpose, you know, making your you as a uh, your save your manual work, save your cost, you know, more focus on new way of um, user interface. Uh, improve quality so automation is a part of like uh, to to optimize your existing uh, process or to make your you free to work with other things so which is there from long time and which is will be there also because still there are many processes and many areas where automation could affect uh, my just just quickly my my sort of my understanding of, of automation is um i mean put it into like a machine if something happens, then that makes something else happen. Is that a, is that a, a, yes? This a, is in technical terms. If you say like that, so yeah. this is like that. So automation work in a process is work in a like a programmer or an algorithm. So it's more like a, it's all driven by the programs and uh, and the conditions on we do in the programs normally. Uh, but but, a, but a human a human needs a human needs to prescribe what it is that happens. Yes, like every single program or automation is done by human only. So, um, like, uh, it's machine cannot learn from automation or it cannot do by themselves. So, that's the different definition will come on machine learning. But, yes, automation is more like uh, usual programs and applications, which is done by human, which can, oh. yes, take tasks one after another to make it faster. You don't have to waiting time. It, you have less processing time. You have uh, less resource users, uh, and that's definitely make it faster in terms of uh, your activities and result. Okay, Ian's put a question in the. Um, I should have said this at the beginning. If anybody's got any questions or comments they want to make, put it into the chat bar on the right hand side rather yep. than ask a question. Ian's made a point. Cognitive solutions. Cognitive, I will come in there. What is cognitive uh, in terms of Lehman's term and very easy, but cognitive definitely come into picture, but uh, is something, uh, let us go through one by one definition so people yeah. will understand where cognitive is stand for. Yeah. So as I mentioned, like you asked three terms like automation, yeah. machine learning and uh, yeah. artificial intelligence. Yeah. Like artificial intelligence for me is like more like a journey, right? So, um, so definitely is a step-by-step -step process. Start with definitely automation, like, like basic, terms of really optimize your process and your task to do it faster but when you turn the next time like more uh, the people and the organization today focusing on machine learning things uh, machine learning is as a is a one type of technology for artificial intelligence technology which are you can train the machines or data in terms of building up models and algorithms and uh, what happens like you provide uh, in a lot of data which is done uh, used from the past or different uh, past sequences to train the model to learn from what is happening it's more used like a predictions more used like as a recommendation or decision making so what happened the data the machine the models run from those data and uh, when you use more and more data from the past and based on the result the machine trained themselves by, uh, by themselves so based on the, all this data part so definitely the, there is a human touch for in the beginning uh, mm -hmm. to develop those machines and this type of models are actually uh, there are a lot of different models available based on their need in terms of statistical and uh, mathematical ways. And uh, based on the different need, uh, we can build up uh, different models uh, on that and machine can train by themselves. Okay, uh, machine learning is also there, different types of machine learning. I don't want to go through all technical details because it will be a little bit difficult to understand for many of the yeah, people. Yeah. But yeah, like, yeah. Uh, there are basic things like there are very simple machine learning models where you just uh, input data and machine learn uh, learn from those uh, data and there are also like we call different um, little bit complex machine learning model we call it, uh, they call it rainfall rainforms and reinforcement uh, learning which is the machine can learn by themselves uh, by their own uh, so you just have input data once or twice and then machine learn by their own 
based on the output or based on the result. So based on the result, they will decide what is the next based model to go forward and take it forward to that. So it's a little bit complex and uh, more thing on that. But uh, many of these applications today, like uh, it's based on rain, rain, uh, reinforcement uh, model. One example is very um, autonomous car, which is drive uh, software. This software is based on this model, which can machine on the car can decide by their own based on the situation. So they can take decision. So this is a very simple example. So yes, now this is one example. So you can see like like most of these applications and today which is based on more like we call AI is more like augmenting applications or augmenting AI, which help us in really augmenting our task, our things in a new direction, not only in optimization, but also where machine can take the decision. So it's helping in, uh, it's more uh, focused on recommendation, predictions, and uh, taking decision uh, for the better. So there are machine learning models come into picture. And if you see like uh, machine learning model is very basic to start with, there are a lot of other things like uh, deep learning, which is uh, like a more concrete level of machine learning. There are cognitive solution, which is raised by one person here, like uh, one audience here. Yes, cognitive is again, uh, is again a one term. This is more like a buzzword from different companies, which is raised. It's more also that like when machine can learn intelligence by themselves. So um, what artificial intelligence actually mean is like to have uh, a machine which have can really have a human uh, or sort of like intelligence, say, like same like a human where they can behave like a human, take decisions, uh, understand, have emotions. So all same, exactly same uh, intelligence as human is more like as an artificial intelligence, which is called. So far, if you see like reality, um, if you see all the data statistics, what I've done, the real artificial intelligence is not into the picture right now. There are a lot of research also from universities like Yale or Oxford, that's um, the real artificial intelligence, which can really uh, like a replica of a human beings in terms of intelligence, which is far, far away from today. Today, the world is more on augmenting. It's also, that's why there are a lot of also experts which call this, instead of uh, artificial intelligence, also called as a IA, which is a intelligence augmentation. This is another term which is used by many experts. Uh, so it's more like augmenting ways. And yes, in future, uh, there could be more possibilities for that. But again, uh, AI totally works on the data and the current situation It learned by themselves. It takes years to reach that level. So, so far, yes, we are in very uh, beginning stage, uh, but it's good that a lot of um, organizations and applications are, are start working with the machine learning models. And there are other AI technologies, uh, for example, uh, natural language processing, which is we see like uh, by using voice control or video chatting, we can use, understand the text. Uh, there are text analytics and other things. There are uh, computer vision and image processing. There are many other aspects of AI technologies used in different applications. Chatbots being a good example of natural language yes, processing. Yes, chatbots is definitely a very good example for natural language processing. And so, did so? Are you saying so? Is is machine learning a, a subset of artificial intelligence? Yes. And so, this is yes. one of the te AI technology which is used, uh, like uh, natural language processing or image processing. So, these are one of the. And uh, if you see also the Gartner trend of AI technologies, this is uh, one of the popular trend or the use, use, the most used technology for AI technology used in most of the companies these days. Because uh, yeah. currently this is easier to build in compared to other, to start with. Yeah. Let's say like in, especially in HR, we are, a lot of companies are using predictive analytics. And this is a, the models used for the predictive analytics, same like in machine learning models, but very simple models, uh, which is used in terms. And this is a quite very simple example of machine learning models used in HR. Yeah. Okay. Um, people talk about um, supervised and unsupervised yeah. um, machine learning. Yes. What's, what's just, what's the difference between those two? Supervise is same like, uh, which I mentioned, like um, you use data to take decision on, uh, it's more like uh, data take decision uh, based on what you've input. And uh, and it has some um, like, um, and it's more used in like prediction, like um, uh, you have some output to define and based on some data, different type of input of data, uh, this model can generate outputs. What is the best output output could be in terms? It's more like a prediction or recommend on that part, like prediction on that. So it's more using like uh, predictive analytics, this type of super, uh, supervised models. There are unsupervised model where uh, this output is not defined. So you don't know what is the output could be. So so what happened? This models learn from the data and then they 
uh, like uh, provide different patterns or uh, which could be happen with this type of different type of data. So there are like pattern recognition is one of the example where unsupervised learning can be used. So where they have no dedicated output, but you can define patterns from the data. So you don't know what is what's happening with this data, but there you can analyze from this different type of set of data. So these are yeah. really two basic model other than which is um, a reinforcement model, which is another one which is more like a, like machine learning by themselves. Okay, so before we go into um, the specific applications for HR, you've, I, I've read you talking about sort of three stages really within here. Short term, which is automation, medium term, which is augmentation, long term, which is amplification. Yes. Could you take, could you take us through those, those three stages? Yes, I definitely. Um, I think some of them I've already started, like automation. Yeah. It will basic one which we start with. Like if you really want to go with AI and application of AI for our daily processes and our applications and for the workforce, I think automation is uh, someone who will start with definitely the first time. The main um, uh, repetitive tasks. Yes. Uh, yeah. So so, yeah. so it's, yeah. it's actually rep uh, replacing the repetitive task. It's, it's a major uh, target for this automation is cost saving. To have a um, like you automate your process, there are also like uh, very different um, dedicated term used for this type of application called robotic process automation, which is also very quite popular. Uh, which is also set, uh, which is based on, which is at a higher version of automate uh, level, I can say, uh, which is doing the same thing, uh, but in a very complex way. You can handle, you can uh, build a different type of model and that part. Uh, also, like um, the, the the automation is more like also new form of UI, uh, which I said because uh, there is also a new terminology like AI is a new UI, uh, which is uh, definitely a big term on that. Um, the next one is the augmenting, which, as I said, like uh, people are mostly affected with today uh, in terms of uh, or personally or professionally. It's more like um, using of new, very simple AI technologies, this different model to use your tax uh, easier so when we use uh, augmenting a term is more like like the, the applications on the technology are using by their own by their own by the use of data so it's comprehensive use of more and more use of data to use better decision making better recommendation better predictions finding the right patterns and to take decision based on that so this is a currently we are in the stage of augmentation if i say if you say like that because uh, most of us are using somehow in, in some part some augmenting task uh, our task i think the next start which is should we go like is amplifying like more like autonomous work or decision making done by machines so they are called as decision making system uh, or recommendation systems or autonomous systems. It's more like like small people also think kind of like a, like a robots who can take decision by their own. A part of the chat box who can take decision of their own. So it's more like a, an like an amplified version of augmenting uh, tasks or applications, which will definitely help us in taking human function in a more autonomous way than what we are doing. Uh, there are very few examples I can see uh, if I do in a lot of research on that, but I think in future it will come more, but it will take time because there is always need to go from one step to another with time on that. But still, uh, if you say about also amplifying is not to replace any humans on that, it, it will take like a long, long time. This is still to help uh, humans and us, uh, the machines working with us together to boost our uh, productivity in terms of it's creating new where uh, new world of intelligence in terms of combining power of machines and human both. So that's the main target on that purpose. Okay, um, fine. So let's talk about jobs because you you have you've said it's not about replacing humans, and I mean I have quite honestly even with our own so our, our my own product candidate ID is an automation product. And I have people, I have talent acquisition leaders saying to me, how many people, can, I've got a team of 50, how many people can I remove from my team if I use candidate ID? And you know, I'm not going to tell you what my answer is to that, but I, you know, I, I, this is happening today. I know one bank who has a target of reducing 30,000 jobs between now and 2021. And they say, oh, we're, you know, they all, they say, well, we're, we're going to be creating 5,000, um, you know, uh, jobs at the same time. But that's still a net loss of 25,000 jobs. So do you not think, do you not think this, is, this will result in lots and lots of humans not having any, you know, any, any work? 
Uh, if you see the trends, uh, which is done by a lot of companies so far from, uh, it's more like not replacing like a job displacement, I would say. Yes, there are. Uh, and if you, if you analyze further, you can see like more job displacement happen in uh, mostly in blue collar jobs, you know, so like more like a like uh, blue, like uh, uh, like cleaning, like uh, driving and, and yeah. more like physical labor. And it's not new, no. actually, if you see, because uh, AI and robotics is using, uh, we are using it for a long time. See what's happening in production line and yeah. manufacturing industry, like for like, automotive company yeah. or any manufacturing company. Yeah, so so robots are using for a long, long time, and they are working with um, uh, with humans together. So I have been to like few factories uh, um, a lot of times, and I've seen like humans and uh, machines are working together for a long time. So th think about also the research institute or like uh, research and pharma research. AI is used also from also from a lot of uh, long time. So it's not new on that part, uh, which is part of AI is a part of our job from a long time. And also we have seen this displacement of job in time to time because. Uh, if you because recently there is a publication last year I think by McKinsey and they are seeing like this the shift of jobs or displacement is happening in three ages because if you see like uh, in the earlier days there are like more focus on industry like agriculture industry than the, like other manufacturing others and uh, more people working in agriculture than the, any other and there are industries like communications and others that doesn't exist anymore so if you see like all this um, number of years and uh, decades uh, this shifts changes you know like more and more job uh, get um, reduced in agriculture more in manufacturing and if you see like from manufacturing there is also reducing this coming in new industries which is like communications entertainment media and all these they are increasing so this job displacement is not new and this is a root analysis yeah. by McKinsey and others which is uh, pretty common and it's more like uh, instead of job displacement I think people should focus yeah. on reskilling because I think that's uh, totally um, proportionate to this one because uh, there are always need to reskill ourselves in terms of uh, what we are learning and it's also help us to do our job and go motivate and that's also a different topic to discuss how to rescale what are the mm. skills of uh, the future and what skills are going to mm. obsolete in the yeah okay um so yeah no there are certain industries where my son's three years old and there's certain industries that 25 years ago i might have said yeah go and train to be a lawyer and today i'm not sure that i would be suggesting that he goes to do that because i don't really see a lot of need for some of these knowledge-based industries they're, they're probably not going to be needed in the future but reskilling um is absolutely the right way to look at it now um let's talk about hr specifically so what do you think in terms of all the different business here uh, kind of professional areas within hr which are the ones that you think have got the biggest opportunity um to 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 be enhanced through technology and um let, let's talk through the different job functions and the different tasks and what have you seen I think if you see like the major effect in HR is, is with hiring and recruiting. I think that's your area, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you should, you have um, like most knowledge on this part. And if you see like in, uh, right totally on that, and not only in sourcing, but also in talent acquisitions and uh, different hiring. And also like if you see like there are few startups for last few years who are doing like, like totally robot recruiting, like from beginning to end, like end to end by totally on through like um, using of the use of AI technologies. And they're quite successful because they're used by also like well-known organizations uh, by them. So there are, yeah, there are common examples on that and that definitely there's a uh, talent acquisition recruiting market uh, is definitely going to affect more or already started affecting. I have seen like there are a lot of lot of startups which is especially focusing on uh, these areas, uh, starting from um, CV parsing, you know, to find out the right candidate uh, and using the technology of NLPs and machine learning to find the right candidate for. It's actually good in terms of um, when you see like the, the too much uh, hectic job for a recruiter to really for a large organization to have a really. Um, find out the right CV or the right candidate from so many CVs out there. On the other hand, like uh, personally, I think totally replacing the recruiting part with machines could be dangerous <laughs> because it's also really losing the human part or, or the human part of that. And I think uh, every single recruitment also need to understand like the human emotions, emotional intelligence, the creativity part. 
and uh, the relationship part, how the good person is in terms of collaboration, relationship, the soft skills. So all these things, I think today the, the robots and the AI technology is not ready with, maybe in future, but not today. So um, replacing totally with this technology is, doesn't make sense. But yes, uh, using of technology to boost it, uh, to make it more beneficial for us is definitely uh, meaningful. So I see today in terms of recruitment, I see people who are still doing things the same way that I was doing them when I started in 1999. And then I see people and organizations that have removed probably 80% of what I did back then um, because, it is, because technology is able to do it, including the sourcing, including the candidate outreach, including assessment, um, including scheduling meetings, um, including then making offers and you know doing all of that kind of thing then the hum the human bit really is at the negotiation stage and the um <clears throat> the soft skills needed to um really under understand something about pe humans that, that that machine machines can't can't learn but that's mm -hmm. that's in cases that i can see it's maybe only 20 percent of what it used to be so that's a it's a good one to start with um i think yeah. it has been traditionally a very um, human activity and a very manual activity and there's lots of repetitive tasks within recruitment and actually one thing that it's doing which I think is good is it, it, it's making people realize that all of those different in, in the job of a 360 degree recruiter I mean that's about 10 different skill sets within yeah. that one job and so it was very rare to find somebody that could do everything really well um, but now that the kind of repetitive things can, can be, um, uh, can, can be kind of automated, that means that, that recruiters can focus on doing the bit that they get paid to do. So I think that's good. Um, what about in areas like, um, learning and learning and development, those kind, that kind of area? training and that kind of thing yes learning there is a lot of users already use of if you see especially as i mentioned like um, the things like ai comes from the data and if you see there are a lot of use of analytics in learning so far like uh, in terms of prediction in terms of recommendations especially like uh, there are a lot of service providers like all from big and small now you can recommend uh, by their own which is the best learning opportunity for the future leader or for the future workforce who is joining. There are also a lot of uh, automation or uh, use of uh, AI in onboarding to have his, all the process very faster and easier. And also it track it down. It can give you insight for your, your manager or like hiring manager or the HR, how it's going with that. So there are a lot of cases from terms of uh, the learning, the onboarding, and uh, also the performance management there is use uh, on that. So it, as I mentioned, like there are more use of data-driven um, and more are used for the meta-driven insight or meta decision-making in terms of uh, all these areas. And I can see there already use of AI in terms of augmentation. But again, when you start with data-driven things, uh, you're making an application based on that, you're using analysis um, analytics as a whole, it will definitely goes beyond. Because if you see also the analytics maturity curve, it started with very much um, on like, uh, basic analytics that is goes to prediction predictive analytics this is good and then the curve goes to the prescriptive, prescriptive analytics which is more like um, the, um, from analytics it can give you uh, some uh, plan for the action what is the action need to be taken for this type of insight so and then it goes to more like cognitive as i mentioned like where the data and the models take the decision by their own and make a decision making system uh, in the future uh, maybe it takes some time to go but again once you have data, once you have using this application and the step-by-step -step process, it will reach there. And uh, I'm sure in coming in, a lot of new applications, new effects and impact of AI on all these areas. And I'm sure in all other areas because every year's analytics in, already in the picture. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. So does that mean that um, in terms of the future workforce, um, I mean, does that mean that actually human jobs are all going to become much, much more similar than they have been in the past? And with everybody who has a kind of high level, needs to have a high level kind of quite niche specialism, because if you look at almost every job in an office, for example, the, 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 the least, um, the most manual kind of 75% is going to get 
taken away. Yeah. So that means that almost everybody's job is going to become as a, a subject matter expert. If you see, like, uh, I try to, I have a question on this. This question is also I ask me, like, what is going to happen with me or my colleagues? Yeah. I like that uh, in one year back, actually, and try to analyze what is that. And what I've analyzed, not only for me and my colleagues, but also with others, we can see, like, most of our job, like, all of our job, most of us, 60 to 70 percent of our job are very repetitive. Like we are yeah. using time and spending time, tons of paperwork. We are doing scheduling, timesheet, expense, accounting, email management, proposal writing, which is Excel, working on Excel's world and all these things. We are spending 60 to 70 percent of time, most of us, except for a few uh, job or special roles, which are scientific or others. So we are, most of us were doing this. And I see, like, if we can save this 60, at least 50, 40 to 50 percent of time from this, where we can use sort of machines or application to do this for us, and we can use this time for more for different critical thinking, creativity, uh, more on using negotiations, people management, relationship, which we are good or human. And definitely, yes, uh, we own different skills which are not used. I think personally, like nowadays, most of our jobs are pretty much similar, though we are doing these things uh, in a different role or expected, but we are using most of our time in very repetitive tasks, most of us same. But I think if we are using this technology to do this, and we can be more creative in terms of that, and that's uh, that could make us more creative. And if you see like today, every organization wants to be innovative, right? And uh, they don't know what innovation is. The innovation is not a defined story. You have to define and it comes from people's minds. It's us, we will bring innovation for the organizations. And if we don't spend our time on those things, this doesn't, uh, it's very difficult to achieve that. So mm. uh, I don't know like whether the future will be same or not, but I can see like there could be more innovation we can bring if we can use this technology as a part of our life. Mm. Yeah, no, absolutely. And at what point do we have a situation where we have artificial super intelligence and actually they um we are the we, we are ruled by our um robot overlords that's it is true that's an interesting question so i can think of only one thing skylask <laughs> terminator <laughs> the movie called terminator yeah. so we have seen like what is the effect of that yeah but uh, I have seen recently very interesting post by one of the data scientists, very popular data scientist for Facebook, Brandon Aroha. He's analyzing like how the intelligence is, uh, the machine intelligence is taking uh, off the human beings. So he's trying to understand where we are now in terms of machine intelligence uh, comparing to human intelligence. Yeah. And he yeah. has done a very good analysis. And uh, what you have seen, like we have, we know this news, like there are, very good cases of UI, like AI, uh, where mm, they are using in chess to beat Grandmaster. We are, they use uh, Google Deep, uh, Deep um, Google Deep Pro. They are using um, Go uh, for the again beating the professional Go uh, Grandmaster. So yeah. they are beating all these things, uh, and they are very powerful machines using of uh, dedicated task. Again, uh, what he have done, he tried to define human intelligence is two terms one is performance and one in uh, in level x and in y is generality in like versatility of the intelligence so let's say there is a very good program who can beat chess grandmaster or the go grandmaster they are very good very powerful in terms of performance but when we see this intelligence in terms of versatility like a generality so it cannot be used in any other uh, task you know so those Intelligence machines are very good in playing chess or Go or dedicated task. But if we write to use in other things, they cannot. So in terms of uh, that generality, these um, machines are very low. Yeah. So again, very far reach from human intelligence. In the other side, there are, we have also seen a uh, set of robots like humanoids. We, there are a lot of their comings. They're called Robot Sophia, which is also coming in a lot of conference yeah. we have seen. Again, when you try to understand their intelligence, they are quite, their um, generality is very high. They're very much doing tasks on terms of human uh, beings. But again, the performance compared to human intelligence is, is like one tenth or one less than 10% uh, even. So again, uh, so if you see, there's a curve, I cannot show you tonight. So he mentioned the curve of human intelligence and there is nobody currently uh, in terms of super intelligence, which is coming nearby the human path. And which is take also, it's done, same thing done by, uh, declared by a lot of university in their research. It will take uh, years or hundred, more than hundred years to reach that super intelligence. 
but again it's also depend on human beings uh, where we want to the world want to go if we do it in a right way you know we can we can control it in a, in our own uh, sake things will be in better hands as uh, things future will be better but if yeah. we really make it uh, totally uh, out of our hand uh, things could be worse uh, it could be faster because ai uh, the power of ai is such power like powerful and uh, intelligence they can be also used in things like in war weapons or weapons or in war which is more dangerous like uh, we have seen some of the example which is coming the in news or the social media like uh, ai using in weapons or in different war games and other so which could be more dangerous so definitely yeah. the risk <laughs> yeah absolutely we've seen so i I've, i've seen uh, i've seen a robot judge who um presided over a, a number of court cases and got everyone spot on i've seen uh, there's a robot dentist in china which um has undertaken um you know dental operations and and completed them very effectively and then um a robot took part in i think it was sourcecon uh the sourcecon kind of sourcing competition mm-hmm. and the uh the, the robot came came i think third in ter- in, uh, in in the whole competition and then you mentioned earlier we've got products like robot vera from yeah. russia yeah. which you tell it what you're looking for it finds all the people it then reaches out to them online schedules a time for a conversation phones you at the time that you know that, that you're meant to be ready and then asks you some questions records you and then tells the recruiter whether the person gave good answers or not <laughs> so it's you know that's pretty incredible i'm not sure i would want a russian uh, robot interviewing me on the phone but we'll we'll see Sophie Chan has asked how long do you think it will take for all transactional services in HR to be automated as a standard Look uh, if you see like um, automation in the HR processes that's not the target actually for most of the people if you really want to be innovate it's not about only on automation rather than really to use the smart processes and to make the optimization of the processes that's most really important if you also see the processes in like other area it's called like business process reengineering so we have to yeah. think about the processes to to really opt out all the complex processes make it simple for us it's more about our employee experience more about our how to make it easy, like a better experience for all of us in terms of workforce and that so if we really think of uh, from the like really automate the existing process we have to more focus on how we can make it better experience for employees in the workforce and definitely the automation comes into the picture it's always there but um, i think our target should not to make more process automate because otherwise we will have the same process which is other than manual is automate rather this is more important for us to also to increase our experience and how we can use better use of data driven world in terms of uh, better decision making and our growth But you could I mean you could you could automate all transactional services in HR today. There's yes. no reason why they can't be. I mean they they all there is technology that automates every single transactional service within HR. Yeah, there are definitely the technology on that but I never um, um, I never heard like people really want to really automate all existing transaction and everything. That's not the focus actually. There could be done but that's not the focus. That's what I've mentioned like that should be yeah. our target. we should have yeah, the, simple for us you know so the fo- the focus today is actually on um a- amplifying or augment augmenting the human experience yes um and augmenting what humans are able to deliver so it's more about productivity rather than um uh, efficiency yes that's more productivity and i also mentioned in this term like i i like to call it like a human machine inter- uh, collaboration and i call it also human plus machine where in one side definitely the it can be affected with augmentation and amplification of uh, machine on other side we can use also human creativity uh, our relationships our communication uh, strength our uh, critical thinking strength to picture and then we think this both if you seeing like capabilities like both from both side i think that could be much in more interesting intelligence it's called like uh, intelligence uh, automation are on that into pictures in better way So I think that's the future is more on the uh, having the right accountability and explainability where human can take part of that. So there's yeah. so like term called rehumanization. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. we should focus on that instead of doing what we are doing today. And it's not a bad in that way, but uh, that's what's what important to really have to focus on the rehumanization. We have to reskill ourselves. We have to find out what is the best things we can be um, interested in, which can make us more motivated, which can make us more creative. And I think that's that's the better world for also us, like what we are doing today, which is more repetitive things. And we should come out of that and we should work with machine together. But again, uh, there is also a different concept. Like when we talk about human plus machine, it's like robots working with us as in uh, our um, colleague. It's not like that. It's more like augmenting way. So like uh, using of the power of machines and AI and using also a power of us human together with them. So we should not um, also lose the part of human things also in uh, future automation and intelligence because human intelligence is still in top compared to machine. Yeah, no, I, I, absolutely. That's loud and clear. The um, what one one interesting aspect to this it, from from my perspective is, so I'm in the world of talent attraction and, and recruitment marketing, and of course, because of technology, people have got more different and varied ways that they can earn money today and they can earn a living. Mm -hmm. So because of that, employers that we work with, they need to use technology, our technology, but there are others available. They use our technology in order to automate the process of communicating with a lot of different people and doing it on a personalized basis because the, the world is more disparate and fragmented or the yeah. workforce is more disparate and fragmented than it has been. So it's much harder to really kind of, yeah, keep, keep, a, keep a note of where everybody is and what they're doing. And long gone are the days when you knew within your four competitors, this is what all their internal teams look like and that's who I wanted to hire. Those days are gone, and uh, you know people people are rejecting the concept of full time permanent working a lot lot more than than they were in in, in the past. So yes, definitely you're right on that. So you have to also consider the things like the new work trends, like uh, going more on gig economy. The more uh, like freelancers are working globally across uh, working remotely. So all this technology is definitely going to boost and enable these things and make it happen in a better way. Uh, you know, because um, one thing also very mixed conception of technology by many people I've heard, like they are trying to understand or use technology as a solution, which is totally wrong, I think, because technology is an enabler. Solution is made by human, not by technology. So it's, it's us who can make the better solution, uh, like with our better decision making and understand. And use of technology can help us to boost to make the solution better. So if we really want to find a solution from the technology, which will never going to work. And that's why like many startups also getting failed because they want to sell or more focus on product than really um, focus on the solution on the part. And uh, that's why it's all linked there. And what I also understand, like, we have to understand what are the need of the business, what are the challenges currently, and how we can use or enable technology to solve that challenge in terms of us. And it's only us we can make it. It's not the technology cannot do it by their own. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. This has been um, this has been really fascinating. We've covered a lot of different subjects. I know from having spoken to you in the past and yeah. from having read some of the things you you you. Uh, you write about that um, you could go a lot, lot deeper into multiple aspects of, of yeah. these uh, of these subjects. Um, Sumya, it, what would somebody if uh, if if somebody wanted to engage you to come and do something with them? What might that look like, and how would people make contact with you? Hey, look, uh, I think today the social media is the right channel to contact. Like I have a LinkedIn account, I have a Twitter account, and the good thing is my is that my name is very much unique. If you search like Somia Santo, I am the only one in the world where we can find it. <laughs> so it's easy to reach me. So just uh, take, um, if somebody needs to contact, any help, uh, just contact me in social media and Twitter and LinkedIn. Um, I will be reachable always. I try to help others. So I think I believe strongly on collaboration. So definitely is on that. Terrific. Okay. Well, thank you so much for coming and joining us. Um, I've really, really, as always, been very stimulated by the things that you're talking about. I look forward to talking to you again soon because um, I think we're going to be uh, I think we're going to be at a couple of events together yes. uh, later later during the year. So um, yeah, thank you once again, Sumya. For everybody that's Thanks joined so in, Thanks, um, keep 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 a lookout for our, our next talent talk uh, coming up in two weeks. So thank you. Bye for now. Thank you. Bye. Al.